Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on the topic. Love, not the world. Family, we know that in this world, we have a lot of wickedness and evil and hatred and ungodliness. And we know we was put here for a purpose and for a reason. To learn to go through fiery trials. To be tested just as all of those Thousands and thousands of sperms had to be tested when we was being created. There was only one that made it. And you was formed in your mother's womb. And I was formed in my mother's womb from that one sperm that made it. All of the other ones died out because... They didn't make it. Just as we've been given the opportunity to be born in this world, to learn of the creations that the Most High created and their characteristics and and how they function and the purpose in, in learning how he skillfully created everything our eyes can see. He gave us his word. He placed his law in our heart and, and in our mind. He gave us instruction to follow a people governed by the laws of God. He even showed us others of his creations that that is not governed by the law of God and the characteristics to learn from. So we can know the difference between clean and, and unclean, holy and unholy. Love not the world. So just as only one sperm made it home, one sperm out of all of the thousands of sperms it took to make you and it took to make I, myself. He tell us clearly and I'll go there. I'm not going to quote it. I'm going to go there in Jeremiah. Chapter three. In verse 14, he says, turn, O backsliding children, said the Spirit of God. For I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city. And all of the thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the city. I'm going to take one of a city. And two of a family. In other words, it may be two uh, in your generation of your family. Only two. Think about family reunion and all of the ones that 
come and get together to unite. Out of your generation, two of a family. And I will bring you to Zion. Not only that, he tells us in verse 15, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. This is a gift. You don't have to pay for them. You don't have to pay a salary. You don't have to give a love offering. You don't have to do anything that's pertaining to money. I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Love not the world. Love not the world. Whatever the world is trying to persuade you with and entice you with and introduce to you. He's telling us love not the world. You and I do not owe the world anything. Make no promises to the world. Promise not the world. So family, we're going to go ahead and get started with this teaching. And we're going to allow these precepts of the Most High God of Israel to minister unto us. And it's going to be a textbook teaching, but we can draw a lot of valuable information from it. And make sure we have meat stored up in our storehouse. Love not the world. So once again, this is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And we're going to go ahead and get started with this teaching. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 44 and verse 1 and 2. He says, yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel whom I have chosen. Thus said the Spirit of God that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, and my servant, and Thou Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. He says, fear not. Proverbs. Chapter 19. And verse 20. He says, Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. He want us to hear, hearken, and pay attention. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 19. He says, hear thou, my son, my servant, and be wise and guide thine heart in the way. This is what I want you to do. And I'm getting ready to tell you the reason why I want you to do it. According to John chapter 15 and, and verse 16. He says, ye have not chosen me, but however, I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go 
and bring forth fruit. In other words, you shall bring forth words. <clears throat> Excuse me. You should bring forth words. And that your fruit, meaning what? And that your works should remain. We know faith without works is dead. So you should bring forth works and your works should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, in other words, in my way, he may give it you. That's what he's telling us. John chapter 14 and Verse 17, he say, whatever you ask in my way, he may give it to you. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Keep in mind that all of those sperms that didn't make it. He said, We didn't choose him, but he chose us. You made it. It's a purpose for in which you was made. He say, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Verse 12. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. So he said that you should bring forth works and your works shall remain. And he said, greater works than these shall ye do because I go unto my father. That's real. He's laying it all out for us. John chapter 15 and verse 17 down to 19. He says, these things I command you that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. You got to realize it was you who I chose from the womb. It was you who I called by my name, by my way. I placed my law in your heart and in your mind. And it's for you to produce fruits. And your fruits shall remain these works. That's what's going on. So when the world is hating on you, don't trip. Because you got a job and a purpose to shed light in this dark world. You got a work to do. Your work should remain. You shouldn't be slothful and, and, and being lazy. You have a work to do. He says, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, 
but I have chosen you out of the world with my word. Therefore, the world hated you. So in other words, as long as you entangle with that worldly mindset, you're doing the thing that the world does. you worshiping the gods that the world worship and the doctrines and the teachings and the culture and the holidays celebrating everything that the world celebrates. Then he said the world will love his own. But because I came and found you with my word and I put you on the straight and narrow and now you don't do the things you used to do. You don't think the way you used to think. You don't celebrate these holidays the way you used to celebrate them. You don't worship on Sunday the way you was brought up worshiping. Now, all of a sudden, the world hated you. But he gave us warning. He said in verse 18, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. This is Christ speaking. Now, what I want to do, I laid out some examples in scripture just to prove the point and show, give illustration how the world hates you. That's what I want to do. So let's, let's go here. I got maybe about five different examples. I want to put it on pretty thick and there's plenty more areas that I could go but for the sake of the teaching I just narrowed it down to about five wait this plenty places I can go this can be an ongoing series of showing scripture where the world hates you but I haven't been led to do that but the first location we're going to go is in Psalms 83, verse 1 through 5. He says, keep not thou silence, O God, and hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. He said, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. This is what they have did. He said they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name, meaning that the way of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So your judgments and your statues that you have taught us and given to us. The way of being servants of Jehovah, they don't want that to be no more in remembrance. Why? So we can continue to be aligned with the world in worldly ways. Pledging allegiance to the world. To think and live like the world. They don't want it to be a difference between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. Everyone to think the same. Worship the same. 
So they say, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. We don't want them to think independently. We don't want them to worship their God independently. We don't want them to have a, a high day, a holy day independently. The Sabbath day, no. We done gave them Sunday. We don't want them having the Sabbath day as a day of worship. You want to cut that off that the way of Israel may be no more in remembrance. We want them to forget about their culture and their practices. For they have consulted together with one consent they are confederate against thee. Christ already warned us. Know if they hate you, know that they first hated me before they hated you. He already gave us warning. And that's the first example. I'm not going to expound on it too much because it's pretty... Uh, self-explanatorial and so this next location I'm gonna go to um, let me get the scripture down just right because the one Bible that I was pulling from is is worded a little the uh, chapters in the book in the Apocrypha is a little different so in one second this information up. Okay, it's going to be <clears throat> in the Apocrypha. Some Bibles may read additions to, Ex to Esther chapter 4. And then other Bibles is going to read Esther chapter 13. So it just depends on how your Bible is reading. It's the same information. It just depends on how it's laid out. So I'm going to repeat that again for the ones that's writing and taking down notes. One Bible may say additions to Esther chapter 4, which is in the Apocrypha. And some may say Esther chapter 13 is still in the Apocrypha. It's just according on how it's laid out. So we're going to run verse 1 down to 7. He says, the copy of the letters was this. The great king Artaxerxes writed these things to the princes and governors that are under him from India unto Ethiopia. And in 107 and 20 provinces. After that, I became Lord over many nations and had dominion over the whole world, not lifted up with presumption of my authority, but carrying myself always with equity and mildness. I propose to settle my subjects continually in a quiet life and making my kingdom peaceable and open for passage to the utmost coast to renew peace, which is desired of all men. Now, when I ask my counselors how this might be brought to pass, Amen, or some would say Haman, that it sailed in wisdom among us and was approved 
for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity and had the honor of the second place in the kingdom. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world there were scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations and continually despise the commandments of kings. So as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. Seeing then we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. Differing in a strange manner of their laws and evil affected to our state. Working all the mischiefs they can that our kingdom may not be firmly established. Therefore, have we commanded that all they that are signified in writing unto you by Amen or by Haman, who is ordained over the affairs and is next unto us, shall all of their wives and children be utterly destroyed by the sword of their enemies without all mercy and pity the 14th day of the 12th month Adar of this present year. That day who of old and now are and now also are malicious may in one day with violence, with torture and torment, go into the grave. And so ever hereafter cause our affairs to be well settled without trouble. See what I'm doing, family. I'm laying out examples in scripture where the world hated the children of Israel. We see here that they wanted to do a genocide on this Hebrew nation. Wives, children, all men without mercy nor pity want to do a total cleansing. This is how much the world hates you. We want the way of Israel to be no more in remembrance. Let's get our third example in scripture, the book of First Maccabees, chapter three, and we are hit verse 41 down to 53. We're getting examples of the world hating Israel. Verse 41 says in the merchants of the country hearing the fame of them took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves a power also of Syria and of the land of the Philistines joined themselves unto them. Now when Judas and his brethren saw 
that miseries were multiplied and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed fortune of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Then was the congregation gathered together that they might be ready for battle and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion. Now Jerusalem lay void as a wilderness. There was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary also was trodden down and aliens kept the stronghold. The heathen had their habitation in that place and joy was taken from Jacob. And the pipe with the harp cease. Wherefore the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Maspha over against Jerusalem. For in Maspha was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes and laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They brought also the priest's garments and the first fruits and the tithes and the Nazarites they stirred up who had accomplished their days. Then cried they with a loud voice towards heaven saying, what shall we do with these? And whither shall we carry them away? For thy sanctuary is trodden down and profane and thy priests are in heaviness and brought low and lo the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us what things they imagine against us thou knowest how shall we be able to stand against them Except thou, O oh God, be our help. See, when you got the whole wide world against you, and then spiritually speaking, you got the prince of this world against you, trying to entice you and tempt you and persuade you and provoke you. Our only help is in the most high. He said, how shall we be able to stand against them except thou, O oh God, be our help, be our guide, be our protection. Be our light. It's no other way. We can't even help ourselves, but you, O oh Heavenly Father, is our help. So let's get our fourth example. We see 
how the heathen were assembled together against us to destroy us. See it right in scripture. You can't spin it. You can't change the narrative. And we know this is a spiritual battle. It's not carnal. It's all spiritual. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10 down to 22. Let's look at the mindset of the world, the ungodly. They say, let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow. Nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Let our strength be the law of justice. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous. Because he is not for our turn. And he is clean. Contrary to our doings. He upbraided us with our offending the law. And objected to our infamy, the transgressions of our education. He professed to have the knowledge of God and he called it himself the child of the Lord, of the creator. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us even to be whole. For his life is not like other men's. It's a difference in him. His ways are of another fashion. Something change about them. They don't want to do the same things that we do. Their conversations is so deep and is, is always spiritual. I don't understand them sometimes. It seems like they're talking over my head. I try to relate to them, but they, they just always seem to be vibrating on a higher level. Their conversation is always deep. His ways are of another fashion. We are esteem of him as counterfeits. Ish. We know ish mean the characteristics of the real thing. We are esteem of him as counterfeits. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounced it the end of the just to be blessed. And make it his boast. That God is his father. So you know what? Let us see if his words be true. And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. He want to be the child of God and he want to have the knowledge of God and he want to call himself righteous and clean and he want to abide by these laws of God and worship this most high God of Israel. Let us prove what shall happen 
and the end of him. We can't take away his mind and we can't tell him how to think or change the way he think, but oh, we can put him through something. We can make him go through something hell on earth. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand and the power of his enemies. Let us, because we want to be God, we want to play the God of the whole wide world of every country. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture let's do some butt breaking let's get the strongest one out of the whole bunch and 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 get him out in front of everybody and we're going to tie a rope to to one foot and a rope to the other foot and tie them to two horses going in the opposite direction from each other and we're going to slap the horses on their behind and make them run in opposite directions. Not only that, we're going to torture him with ungodly acts. We going to take his manhood in front of his wife, in front of his children, in front of the other men. So we can put fear in them because they looked at him as the strong man of the tribe. We take his manhood. Now that mother gonna always be timid with her children to raise them up to never go against us because they, that mother don't want what happened to that strong one out of the tribe that happened to those kids? Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. In other words, let us perform a hysterectomy with no anesthesia. He don't need no pain medicine. Let us do it raw and see. Their God will help them. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. Let us do that. For by his own sin, he shall be respected. Oh, such things they did imagine and were deceived. for their own wickedness have blinded them. Their own evil and hatred being on a power trip 
being greedy for money have blinded them. Oh, as for the mysteries of God, they knew them not. Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness. Nor discern a reward for blameless souls. We was always being hunted down and being pushed up put out more labor, put out more labor if you couldn't put it out you'll be whipped and beat it So we're going to go to our fifth example, which would be the, the last example. Over in 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, and verse 41 down to 64. He says, moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols, these other deities, these other gods, three-headed gods, and profane the Sabbath. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols, these church buildings, and sacrifice swine flesh and unclean beasts. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable of all manner of uncleanness and profanation. So spiritually this Swine's flesh is just unclean meats, meaning unclean doctrines. Falsities. 
He says to the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. This is what's going to happen. In the self-same manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wed everyone that forsook the law and so they committed evils in the land and drove the Israelites into secret places even wheresoever they could flee for secure. So I laid out five examples where the world hated Israel. You see that? It's pinned in scripture, so we can't say that the world have not hated Israel. We cannot say that. So he's telling us love not the world. Love not the world. John chapter 15. Verse 20 down to 21. He says, remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sin, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's meaning my way's sake. Oh, I told you it's spiritual. It's not carnal. It's a spiritual battle. All these things will they do unto you for my way's sake because they know not him that sent me. Jehovah speaking. Matter of fact, I, I want to show you. I want to prove to you that it's spiritual. It's not carnal. It has nothing to do with flesh. It has nothing to do with race or, or different countries. It, it don't have nothing to do with any of that. Because we see right here in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is a spiritual fight. This is a spiritual hatred. This is a spiritual battle. It has nothing to do with the flesh or races of people. It's bigger than that. It's deeper than that. This is a spiritual thing.
You are a servant of Yahweh. The world hated you. For following his ways. Has nothing to do with flesh. He says, wherefore. Take unto you the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's what he tells us. Told us in verse 11, put on the whole arm of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. First John chapter two and verse 15 down to 17. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world pass it away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abide it forever. Sarah. Say he that do it the will of God abide it forever. Chapter 44, and we're gonna hit verse one all the way down to 23. He says, Let us now praise, meaning confess of famous men and our fathers that Begat us. The Lord have wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms. Men renowned for their power. Giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning. Meet for the people, wise and eloquent are their instructions. Such as found out musical tunes and recited verses and writing. Rich men furnished with ability living peaceably in their habitations. All these were honored in their generations and were the glory of their times. There be of them that have left a name behind them that their praises might be reported. And some there be which have no memorial who are perish as though they had never been. 
and are become as though they had never been born and their children after them and in their works after them because why they was being ungodly but these were merciful men whose righteousness have not been forgotten with their seed shall continually remain a good inheritance and their children are within the covenant. Their seed standeth fast in their children for their sakes. Their seed shall remain forever. And their glory shall, shall not be blotted out. Their bodies are buried in peace. But their name liveth forevermore the people will tell of their wisdom and the congregation will show forth their praise Enoch pleased the creator and was translated being an example of repentance to all generations Noah was found perfect and righteous. In the time of wrath, he was taken in his change for the, for the world. Therefore was he left as a remnant unto the earth when the flood came. An everlasting covenant was made with him that all flesh should perish no more by the flood. Abraham was a great father of many people. In glory was there none like unto him who kept the law of the Most High and was in covenant with him. He established the covenant in his flesh and when he was proved, he was found faithful. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and caused them to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the utmost part of the land. With Isaac did he establish likewise for Abraham his father's sake the blessing of all men and the covenant and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him an heritage and divided his portions among the 12 tribes that he parted. them. That's what he did. John chapter 17. Verse nine down to 24. He says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. He just told us what he gave them. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou has given me. For they are dying and all mine are dying. And dying are mine. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. 
keep through thine own name, thine own way, those whom thou has given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, in thy way. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word and the world have hated them. We clearly saw examples in scriptures of the world hating them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not. Of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Not through customs of the world and the culture of the world and the practices in the gods of the world. No, but through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone. But however, for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. That's key information right there. So in other words, he's telling you who he gave his law to, his judgments and his statutes to, and they should go out and Produce works and a work shall remain. They have to shine this light everywhere. They're responsible, the light bearers. And he said, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Their vessels being used by the Most High, servants of Yahweh. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou has sent me. In the glory which Thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect and one and that the world may know that thou has sent me and has Love them as thou has loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou has given me 
be with me where I am. That's powerful. That they may behold my glory, which thou has given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Proverbs. Chapter 8. And verse 23 down to 36. He said, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning. Or ever the earth was. When there were no depths. I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled. Before the hills was. I brought forth. While as yet. He had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the death, When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree. That the water should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then I was by him. As one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. Now, therefore, hearken unto me. O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the pulse of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Spirit of God. But he that sinned against me wronged his own soul. All they that hate me love death. John. Chapter 17 and verse 25 and 26. O righteous father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy way and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. John chapter 14. And verse 28 down to 31. He says, Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, 
ye would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. Mm. But that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Romans chapter 16 and verse 24 down to 27. He says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, salvation the anointed one, Howard shot the Messiah, speaking about Jehovah, be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, meaning this message and the preaching of Jesus Christ, salvation, the anointed one, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ, salvation, the anointed one forever. Amen. Love, not the world, family. Love, not the world. He have clearly showed us these examples of the world hating you and how this is spiritual and not carnal. Love, not the world. In other words, promise, not the world. Don't you make any promises to this world. Don't you make any allegiance unto this world. Pilgrims just passing through. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So family, I want to wish everyone a happy Sabbath as we begin this Sabbath morning. I want to encourage your heart and the faith. And remember, faith without works is dead. He said we should... Produce works and our work shall remain. These fruits of the spirit and shall remain. So I'm going to say a shalom to everyone. Until we meet again. Shalom.